Hey everybody, Jim here, and as you can see, in Akiba once again on this really nice day, kind of overcast, but what can you do? Always a nice day when you're in Akiba looking for some video games, which is uh, what we're going to be doing today at Retro Game Camp, which is um, you know a fun enough store to go through. I think they have uh, the highest prices in town as we take a look at... Uh, these little bins they have out front with uh, really cheap cartridges in them. As you can see, like Seiken Densetsu 2 for 30 yen. That's, you know, I don't know if it's, you know, guaranteed to work or anything. You might need to clean it up a little bit. But all this stuff out here basically to catch your attention and uh, make you want to go inside and see, see what they got. As you can see, they got a sign here in English so they know their, their audience. But uh, yeah, so they got all this stuff set up out in front all these loose cartridges and um, well I'm gonna say this about uh, retro game camp uh, also some some Street Fighter 2 if you want to sit down and have a game you're more than welcome um, I'll say this about retro game camp is that um, they might have uh, you know the highest prices typically of any shop in town uh, the kind of the secret to shopping here though um, is look for games that are marked as being half off. Uh, we're gonna see that when we go inside the store. Uh, some games they do mark as being uh, half off, so usually if something's half off, that's uh, about a, a price I'd be willing to pay for it. Um, but as you can see here, yeah, lots of cheap little uh, Famicom and Super Famicom cartridges and uh, Things like this, you know, Super Butoden and uh, Donkey Kong Country or Super Donkey Kong. Uh, really common stuff that uh, doesn't cost much. So that's how they hook you. You look at that and you go, oh, that looks nice. Uh, but, you know, as you can see, they do have, like, a great selection. I'm not going to argue that. Um, they have uh, just this immense amount of video games. So that's always nice. Um, one of the things we can take a look at, though, here, you can see these stickers that say 2020... Uh, battery exchange. Um, all of these cartridges, uh, for all these games that uh, you can save your data on, they have uh, put new batteries in them. Uh, that way, you know, uh, they're guaranteed to, you know, you can, they'll work and you can save your progress and everything. Um, but we're looking at all these cartridges, and as you can see here, uh, some of them are marked as being 50% off. Like this uh, Yoshi's Island, it's 50% off. Putting it at 600 yen, which is uh, less than six dollars. So see, that's that's not like so bad. That's not criminal. Yoshi's Island for for six bucks uh, is pretty good. So 12 bucks, I would definitely not pay for a loose Yoshi's Island, but six, I could see that. Um, Super Donkey Kong 2. So you you half that. It's like four bucks for that, um, and that's okay. So yeah, if you dig around for carts that are marked as being 50% off. You can, uh, you know, maybe get something kind of decent. Uh, Rockman 7, uh, that's, uh, I guess, maybe close to like nine bucks uh, when you cut that in half, which uh, I've seen it go for more, so that's okay. Uh, and here we have a case. You know the deal with the cases. That's money, 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 money. You know, the uh, Ted DiBiase song. Um, so these are all, you know, in really great condition. For sure, complete games. They got Mac Ross in there and like Sonic Blast Man 2 and some other really cool stuff. Uh, and then here, uh, the case where in front of the register, I believe. Um, or not, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, loose cards that are also pretty expensive. They got Phalanx in there and like Iron Commando. You can see uh, Battle Toads and uh, Akumajo Densetsu, aka Castlevania 3, my favorite of the 8 bit uh, Castlevania games. And more, more, more. So they have lots and lots of loose cards. No shortage of those to have a look through. Uh, Gundam Wing Endless Duel. What a fantastic game. They've got that going for 20 something, like maybe like 23 bucks, something like that. Which is, um, I know the, the complete copies of it can be quite a lot. They're like 60 bucks. And we've got our uh, Rockman games here. Rockman 5 complete, 4200. It's like 40 bucks. Actually, my favorite of the 8 bit Rockman games. Mario Bros., Super Mario 3. And uh, lots of other stuff. So we got all of our boxed Famicom stuff here, including uh, our Dragon Quest games. That's nice. Final Fantasy. Also, I do. I think I've, 
I'm almost certain I've mentioned this before as we take a look at some more games. Gradius on the Famicom, great game. You can see their little uh, grading labels on the front. So when you buy a uh, complete game, it'll have a little slip of paper on the front with A, B, and C, and it tells you the condition of the cartridge, uh, the manual, and the box. And if there is no manual inside, it'll also tell you that. Uh, so I, I, I do appreciate that. As we look at some very lovely N64 games. Snowboard Kids, and uh, uh, Yoshi's Island 2, and um, you know, all that good stuff. Zelda is 50% off, so that brings it down to about, oh, I don't know, seven bucks? Seven bucks for a loose Ocarina of Time. Hmm. And uh, more loose games here. Super Famicom, Famicom. There's Valis and um, uh, Muscle Bomber, aka Saturday Night Slam Masters. You decide which is the uh, the uh, better the better title, the more homoerotic. Is it Muscle Bomber or Saturday Night Slam Masters? Uh, Famicom disc games, including this one, uh, Dirty Pair. Which is a uh, kind of a fun little side-scrolling action game for the Famicom Disk System, which I uh, own a copy of. Uh, it's not great, but it's it's pretty cool just that, that there's a Dirty Pair game, because uh, I am a fan of Dirty Pair. But there's Castlevania 2, there's Common Rider. There's all kinds of really cool stuff for the Famicom Disk System, actually. Um, and we've got uh, kind of the uh, the prerequisite stuff, uh, boxed games uh, like 1580 for. Uh, Mario All-Stars, and uh, these are also marked as uh, having their um, batteries exchanged, so they have new batteries in them, which is nice. And I, that's a nice service rendered by this shop. Um, that's just one of the things. They also do um, uh, AV modding on Famicoms and stuff. They do some pretty cool stuff in here. Uh, Puyo Puyo Remix for uh, 980 with everything in a B condition. Puyo Puyo 2 Remix, uh, great game. Any Puyo Puyo puzzle game is going to be great. Uh, any Puyo Puyos or uh, Kirby's Avalanche, Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. Well, those are always cool. Twinbee, Rainbow Bell Adventure. I really like this game. Uh, a lot of fun. Super colorful graphics. And uh, kind of reminiscent gameplay of Rocket Knight Adventure, actually. That's a really great one. That one did not get a release in North America, but I believe it was released uh, in uh, PAL reasons. Tetris Battle Guide Din, my favorite Tetris game. Uh, super fun, super competitive puzzle game. Very, very good stuff. Uh, Tetris Battle Guide in, that's a great one. And one that's, especially if you find it loose, it's pretty cheap these days. So that's one of my recommended games. All this stuff, Ultra Core. Uh, this is a game I love. I uh, picked it up a few months ago and just really great game. I'm definitely going to do some in-depth coverage on that eventually. But all that kind of... Um, you know, indie stuff, re reproductions and all that stuff is over there. And we got a lot more loose Famicom stuff. Our Konami shooters up there, the Parodius and Gradius Salamander, our Dragon Quest games. Um, all kinds of stuff. I like that. I like when games are grouped together by either, you know, some kind of theme, developer, genre, things like that. Um, and also it's nice that they label games as being like action games, RPGs, puzzle and stuff, because if you're looking for things that, you know, you're not too familiar with, um, it's nice to at least know, like, the genre, if you're picking up, like, you know, these, uh, Japanese titles that you don't necessarily know what you're getting into. Um, so we were leaving from here, and I was gonna go, I didn't feel like going upstairs, I was gonna go over to the dungeon, but oh my god, the dungeon is not in operation right now. So... We're not going to be able to do the uh, the dungeon right now. So, hey, while we're here, screw it. We'll go ahead and uh, head upstairs, have a look around. Uh, really, I was in here looking more for, like, Famicom and Super Famicom. Uh, but since we're going to go upstairs, upstairs is where, you know, you can see it on the steps here. You'll find GameCube, PlayStation, Saturn, Dreamcast, all that good stuff. Stuff I, you know... I obviously like a lot, but these, typically, you'll never find them marked as being half off, unfortunately. As we come to the PC Engine section, right at the top of the stairs, uh, lots of PC Engine games and some consoles for sale, and uh, including uh, this one here, but they're selling for $35.8, which I paid like $100 less for at Sudogaya, so yeah, that's pretty, pretty steep stuff. 
Um, but you can see they do have a pretty cool selection of games here, both Hue Card and CD games. Uh-oh. They are out of copies of FX Unit Yuki. Sorry, Maru, get on it. You, I don't know, give them a call? I don't know. Um, uh, Kaizu Shoujin Shibiban Man 3. Uh, which I think the second game is called Shockman on the PC Engine. Uh, this is a pretty fun game, though, on the uh, PC Engine CD, and it's marked as new. It is factory sealed. Uh, so that's another thing. Game Camp does carry a number of factory sealed games, which I don't have any use for. As we look at Mega Drive games, which, um, generally speaking, like, you go to any shop, Mega Drive games are going to be kind of pricey compared to other things. But in here, it's, uh, it's over 30 bucks, almost 40 bucks for a, a copy of Sonic the Hedgehog. It's just like the most common game ever on, on Mega Drive. Uh, some Garou Densetsu, aka Fatal Fury. So you can see they have a pretty cool selection of games. They got um, the essentials, they got your Sonic games and all that, and they've got some Street Fighter and uh, Super Street Fighter 2, I like the cover of, because it's got the, uh, you know, the anime uh, character designs and everything. So that's very cool. So they have like a good selection here. Uh, Samurai Spirits for 2480. I guess that's not too bad for a complete Samurai Spirits. Um, so, yeah, uh, decent selection. It's just that Mega Drive games, uh, I guess in particular, can be quite pricey. As we carry on to older, uh, some you know, like a Neo Geo Gold system here. Expensive stuff, very expensive stuff. Um, just a handful of Neo Geo CD games. Um, Neo Geo CD Special, which is, isn't even really a game, per se. Um, so they have some Neo Geo CD games here. Uh, nothing uh, too... I mean, I like Fighters History Dynamite. That's cool. But most of what they have was like Super Sidekicks and stuff like that. ADK World. Um, so nothing that really knocked my socks off in terms of Neo Geo CD games. Um, and uh, But we come up on the uh, Dreamcast section, which is always a delight for me. Uh, anytime I can dig through some Dreamcast games, I will. So we got JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. 3600 for a complete copy with spine card and everything. That's that's uh, a bit uh, expensive. Well, I think I've, I've, I've said that already. Street Fighter 3 Double Impact 2780. Yeah, the prices in here are higher than you'll find in other places. Uh, that's why I come here strictly, usually for just loose cards. And specifically the loose cards that are marked as 50% off. Um, we've got some cool stuff here. Power Stone. 2680 again that's way too much for that I think I got mine for like five bucks at a book off uh, so hey what can you do uh, but hey if anything there's pleasure in just digging through uh, as we find factory sealed dating sim games all right if I if I play dating sim games at all I might be happy about that hey, Capcom like arcade classics uh, those are always cool but yeah there's this pleasure to be had I guess in the just digging around for games. Uh, also, very tight squeeze in this shop, uh, on this floor in particular, but uh, it's really tight in here, especially for me. I'm 6'1", I go about 200 pounds, and I usually have a backpack with me as well when I'm out on my, my hunting trips. Um, we have got some uh, Rival Schools too, and kind of the greatest hits case. It's like 26 something, um, but that is a great, uh, basically update to the original Rival Schools. So that's pretty cool. Super Adventure Rockman, the FMV Rockman game. It's complete and it's around 30, I don't know, maybe 30 some odd bucks. Um, pretty cool game, uh, Super Adventure Rockman. I uh, covered that so long ago. Biohazard 2180. So actually their, um, their Biohazard games are priced about the same as Super Potato. Uh, so if you want to pick up Biohazard games, the cheapest places, at least in Akiba, to go to are definitely uh, Sudogaya. They have them for like half that price. And uh, yeah, we have as we have a look down the aisles, like it's it's a tight fit. If you could see me here, you'd see me like really pulling my arms in. Um, but anyway, that's uh, a quick look through here. I did pick up some of the half-off titles uh, that are going to be going out to some uh, deserving viewers and over on Patreon. Uh, but anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed uh, having a look around in Retro Game Camp today. Couldn't go into the dungeon, but that's okay. Uh, dug around, looked at some cool games, 
uh, had a nice time anyway here in Akihabara. So thanks for watching, everyone. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Hey everybody, Jim here with you again on this lovely, lovely day here in Akihabara, Tokyo. Uh, today we are going to go do a little digging around in Trader, which is one of my favorite places to look for games here. Uh, there's a few of them. There's Trader, Trader 2, Trader 3, uh, but the big old Trader on the uh, main avenue, this one's my favorite. We're going to go into the, uh, the side door here busting in through the side hatch. Go up to the second floor where all the retro stuff is immediately confronted with this case of broken dreams, baby. The money case, including rendering Ranger for like $2,000. That's a lot of damn money. Uh, we got Vampire Killer in there, Battle Mania, Twinkle Tail, all this cool Mega Drive stuff I'd want. Some Neo Geo as well. Uh, even some PlayStation and Saturn. Like Tri Rush, what is it, Deppy, and they even had Steam Steam Hearts. I have a copy of Steam Hearts actually. It's pretty fun. Uh, as we walk over to some Switch games, you know, I got me a Switch. I do pick up games for it pretty regularly. And we have some cool stuff at Trader. They have Bloodstained here. I've still yet to play Bloodstained. Uh, I will be picking that up at some point, sometime soon. And they have East Eight, which I kind of want to pick up like right now because I want to play some East. Eight, but uh, I'm currently trying to finish two other RPGs, those being Dragon Quest XI and Persona 5 Scramble. And once I'm done with those, I'll probably pick up East 8 next. Uh, but they got some, you know, some Switch stuff in here, including some North American games as well. So that's always nice. And we got some consoles, baby. Always loving me some consoles. They have quite a lot here, and they're all wrapped up and everything. We got some uh, white Sega Saturns. This is a uh, I like my favorite model because I like the controller. I like all the little multicolored buttons. We have some old PS1s. They're like 40 bucks or like maybe just under 40 bucks for those. Uh, Neo Geo AES. Yeah, I guess like thir maybe like 38, 39 bucks for a PS1 is like, meh, okay. I mean, it's in good shape and uh, got everything you need. We got this uh, Sakura Wars Edition Dreamcast. Uh, that's uh, approaching 200 bucks for that actually. Kind of steep. I've seen it for less boxed and like hard offs and stuff. This limited edition yellow fucked up Super Famicom. <laughs> they got that for you. The silver GameCube, which was the one I had back in the day. My current GameCube is black though. And uh, other stuff. Twin Famicom. I need me a new Twin Famicom. And uh, how much are those? Oh, a little expensive for these guys. Um, but Twin Famicoms are fun just because you can play your cartridge games, your Famicom disc games. And that's really cool. We got uh, some PC Engine stuff here, like the Shuttle, Duo RX, Duo R's, all kinds of good stuff. I have a Duo R myself, not an not an RX. Really, I just want that six button controller. But we got Turbo Duos. We got Master System here. Master System, another console I'd like to pick up sometime in the future and uh, start playing some games for that because it looks like they got cool stuff. And they got Retron Fives and other clone consoles available. That's nice if you want to get some uh, sort of all-in-one stuff. GameCube games, which uh, I just look at briefly because I'm not actually collecting GameCube anymore. I'm actually trying to get rid of my GameCube games. Make some room on the shelf, probably for more Switch games. Dreamcast, always love me some Dreamca Dreamcast. They got Ducks version 1.5, which was looking pretty attractive because I have the original Ducks, which is, a, uh, to me, a fun but very imperfect shoot 'em up So I'd like to get Ducks 1.5 and Redux. That would be great, but you can see they got plenty of shoot 'em ups uh, for the Dreamcast. Though I have most of the shooters on the console, and then we got the fighting games here. They always have plenty of these, including Vampire Chronicle, which is great. Uh, I think this was also released on the PSP. Uh, probably my favorite uh, of the Darkstalkers games. Street uh, or Capcom vs. SNK2, the Dreamcast version of that is quite nice. And we got some uh, SNK goodness here. King of Fighters 2002. Very good game in the King of Fighters series. 
And, uh, yeah, I think Dream Dreamcast has a bunch of King of Fighters games on it. Uh, and Power Stone 2. So you can never go wrong with Power Stone 2. They're selling it for, like, 30 bucks or something. I think I got mine for, like, what was it, like, 6 bucks? Factory Seal at a, at a hobby off, of all places. Border Down and Gunbird 2 and uh, all that good stuff. All those really great shooters for the uh, Dreamcast. And we got Purikura Daisoxin, fun game on the Saturn. Sailor Moon, not such a fun game. Marvel Super Heroes, which is, you know, just classic. They're selling that for like 20 bucks. Uh, and that, that Arcade 1-Up just got released, and that's pretty cool. KO Flying Squadron, Elevator Action Returns, um, you know, Cotton 2. These are all just like, you know, you gotta love the Saturn's uh, library of games. So many great action titles, shooters, and things. Uh, Panzer Bandit, that's a game I still don't own. Would like to pick up. It's a little too rich for my blood right now. Abe 99, which is, uh, it's like an $80 game here, but that's, uh, Abe's Exodus, which I love the Oddworld games. But I don't know if I want to pay 80 bucks for it. Mad Stalker. This is a game I picked up recently. Love that game. Really fun mech action beat em up. Uh, so we got all kinds of good, uh, PS1 stuff here. Another library that I'm always singing the praises of if you're an import gamer. We got the PS1 version of Snatcher. Um, which is, uh, you know, pretty good. I suppose this and the Saturn version, uh, they're okay. If nothing else, they're like way, way cheaper than, uh, you'll pay for like an English version. You can probably just patch it. Uh, Battle Mania, which is an amazing game. Hybrid Front, Cheeky Cheeky Boys, which I actually like a lot. Um, Monster World 4 and, uh, Raiden Trad. I love Raiden Trad. Rent a Hero, Rainbow Islands, always fun. So we got all this Mega Drive stuff here, really great stuff. Um, Ghostbusters and uh, Street, Super Street Fighter 2. All these games are great. It's just that Mega Drive games are uh, a little bit pricey these days. Some of them a lot of bit pricey, like Glay Lancer. That's a uh, pretty expensive one you can see here. It's like uh, over 300 bucks, maybe like, I don't know. Uh, but it's pretty expensive. But there are repro carts of that one now, so you can pick those up. I think Columbus Circle put those out. They make a lot of cool reproductions. I like Columbus Circle. Uh, and PS2 stuff. We got these, like, I think these, like, Taito classic collections. The Sega Ages stuff, which is pretty cool. We got, like, Gunstar Heroes and uh, Fist of the North Star. A whole lot of Sakura Wars games. Uh, plenty of stuff. But there's also, like, plenty of uh, shooters and fighting games. Uh, RPGs, all kinds of good stuff. The PS2, another game with just a, an amazing library. We got Mushihime Sama. We got uh, the Gigawing Generations. So I'm guessing it just has Gigawing 1 and 2 in there, which is great. Uh, I like the Gigawing games. I definitely prefer the first Gigawing over the second one, though. Raiden 3, which is uh, another really great shooter. I actually just recently picked up Raiden 5 for my Switch and uh, have been enjoying it, but uh, pretty much anything in the Raiden series. I'm always gonna love just good, straightforward shooting action. We got the, uh, yeah, the Sengoku Aces collection, Gunbird collection. We got all these good fighting games like Melty Blood, which I love. Uh, Bumpy Trot by Irem, which I believe is called uh, Steambot Chronicles. Fun little game. Uh, Metal Slug 3, my favorite in the series. Recently did a Metal Slug 3 review uh, that you can go and uh, check out. I think I did it justice. At least I hope I did. And we got all these King of Fighters games, Street Fighter, and the these various SNK collections, like World Heroes and uh, Fatal Fury and uh, all that good stuff. Uh, the, the Last Blade games. Uh, these are uh, really great. Tremendous fun. Uh, some Samurai action by SNK. But yeah, King of Fighters collections, the NES series, the uh, Orochi Saga, uh, all that stuff. Uh, so lots to choose from on the PS2 in here, uh, which is uh, always nice. Again, the PS1 and the PS2. I always say, if you're going to get into import collecting, those are good ones to get into just because of how big the library of games are and how how cheap some of the games can be. We got all this Super Famicom here, so you can see lots of loose cards. We got plenty of stuff that I've like talked about in the past. There's Go Go Akman, and I think there's like uh, some of the uh, the great battle games with the little SD Gundam characters and all that, like, you know, the prerequisites too. Oh, this one is, is pretty good. Ushio Totora. Ushio and Tora. Uh, this is a fun side-scrolling action game that you can pick up for like 12 bucks or less, maybe well, in the in the area of 12 bucks in Trader. Uh, and it's a pretty fun game. Uh, you should check it out. 
another good stuff in here, you know, Twinbee, Dragon Ball Z, some Sailor Moon. Sailor Moon R is actually a really good beat em up. So is the first one. The Sailor Moon beat em ups are fun. Now we got some boxed East games. So we got East 4, Mask of the Sun, sandwiched between East 3 and East 5. So if you're an East fan, Trader has got you covered. You can pick up a few of those and have some fun with them, which I've developed into quite the East fan. I gotta thank uh, uh, good old Johnny Millennium for opening me up to that. And we got for over 400 bucks, Kiki Kai Kai, which is Pocky and Rocky. Again, another game that I would love to have. If it wasn't a million dollars, Area 88, Lester the Unlikely. We got Mario's and we've got Goemon's and we've got all kinds of good stuff. We got this Gegege no Kitaro uh, game, which is uh, looks pretty cool. This is like a side-scrolling action game. This is one that I actually haven't played. But I need to pick up. I think it's only like 30 bucks or so. Uh, but I passed on it today. Um, and we have Cotton 100%. Fantastic shooter for the Super Famicom. Um, I have a copy myself. So I'm happy with that. Uh, but that's one I, I recommend. And you can see all this other good stuff in here. Just uh, Yeah, they have a pretty, uh, pretty loaded Super Famicom collection. Lots of boxed games. Lots of loose carts. And uh, everything good. Well, I'm, I'm sure not everything is good, but uh, you can you can spend a good time, amount of time looking and find lots of good games like these Famicom games, including our our beautiful, colorful Rockman games, all the great artwork on it. We got Mario Brothers, Makaimura, uh, Kunio, and uh, other things. Hinotori, Poyo Poyo on the Famicom. Good stuff. Super Dodgeball. And uh, what is it? Kunio, Kunio, Kunitachi no something. Or, uh, I forget what it's called, but it's Renegade essentially. Um, but as you can see, we got all of these uh, loose cards here. We got uh, a copy of DuckTales 2. Uh, actually, my preferred of the two uh, DuckTales games. It's like 20 bucks for a loose copy of DuckTales 2. Um, I actually like DuckTales 2 more than the first one. The first one has like a better soundtrack, but I think the second one plays better. And uh, the soundtrack for it is still pretty good. It's it's a much more chill soundtrack. We got all these uh, boxed Famicom games here, uh, looking pretty righteous. Crisis Force. This is a damn fine game by Konami. Shoot 'em up. Um, released exclusively in Japan. Uh, one of the best shoot 'em ups on the console. The only competition is the other Konami shooters, if you ask me. Anyway. Um, but yeah, really really great game. So we got all kinds of good. Uh, box Famicom stuff there and loose Famicom games can't go wrong and we got our our PC Engine section Which is always going to be a favorite section of mine uh, My PC Engine collection has been growing uh, a lot As of late, but we got our we got some good stuff. We got shooters like Override and Tatsujin Yeah, who cards come on. It would have been nice if they would have had screenshots on the back of who cards, but Most of those games do not but there's Tower of Draga there's uh, Wonder Momo, which is a game I covered a long time ago. The game's kind of fun. There's like Final Soldier. We got a bunch of CD games here, uh, which are always great. Sidearm Special, Image Fight 2, uh, Dracula X, always a fan favorite. Double Dragon 2, I love that version of it. Uh, Steam Hearts, Starius 2, Kazekiri, all this great stuff. Uh, Popful Mail. This quickly became one of my favorite PC Engine games. A uh, game by Falcom, F really fun action RPG. I've never played the Super Famicom version or the uh, the Sega CD version, uh, but I love the PC Engine CD version. Uh, we got Metamore Jupiter, which is a uh, side-scrolling shoot 'em up that uh, I have kind of mixed feelings on. It's pretty fun, um, but uh, I don't know. I'd put it somewhere in the middle. It, it it doesn't hold a candle to some of the better shooters on the PC Engine, I think. Um, it's it's decent, but when it comes to PC Engine shooters, sometimes decent. Uh, gets outshone by the really good stuff. Anyway, um, that was uh, a quick little look around in Trader. I actually did pick up a few things today, uh, mostly just like loose carts for the Famicom and Super Famicom, um, because that's usually the, the stuff I send out in the mail. The bulk of what I send out in the mail is Famicom and Super Famicom. That stuff is very popular, because uh, I think a lot of people like me grew up on Nintendo, so that stuff is always really attractive. Anyway, uh, thanks everybody for uh, coming and uh, watching today, this little uh, trip in Trader.
Hey everybody, Jim here in Akiba again today on uh, what was a fairly overcast day. Uh, but we are walking our way over to a nice little shop as we pass a few little delectable items here. Strawberries in the, uh, looks like a, they're in little mouths or something. Weird looking little thing. Uh, anyway, yeah, we're going to Friends today. Friends, one of the, uh, sort of little off the beaten path, little side street, sort of, uh, one of the less popular, uh, retro game shops in this building with some, uh, other stuff, I guess. You can get a massage while you're here. Uh, but yeah, as you can see here, friends. Got some nice little signs set up on the second floor and third floor of this building. And we're going to go inside. I uh, asked ahead of time if I could film or not, which is kind of necessary. Oh yeah, and you got to be wearing masks in here. It's a quote requirement for the store right now. Uh, but yeah, so this uh, cool little store covering two different floors. Uh, yeah, I uh, ingratiated myself by buying some games. Uh, anyway, uh, first we're looking at a little um, box here with a bunch of loose cards. That these are all uh, cheaper than what you'll find up on the uh, shelves and whatnot. Uh, I guess because maybe they're a little, like the condition isn't quite so good. But you can find a lot of stuff in here for, you know, between 500 and a thousand yen usually, um, which is okay. Uh, for, you know, some of this, considering the prices that you normally find in Akiba, like Kirby Superstar, that's 1200 yeah, and that's closer to like, I don't know, 11 bucks. Um, so not so bad, so I guess these carts, maybe they, you know, maybe they're a little dirtier? Uh, True Lies, very cool, um, which I don't think I was even aware that there was a Japanese version of True Lies. Uh, like Super Metroid, uh, some other stuff like that, so there's some decent uh, little games in uh, these boxes here and uh, they are loose and they are not terribly expensive uh, binary land for 500 yen that's a, a very fun little puzzle game adorable game if I do say so myself and uh, some other stuff in here some Dragon Quest uh, for 400 yen that's I don't know I think dra all Dragon Quest games should be like 100 yen uh, Milan Secret Castle cool game and uh, Tiny Toons Great game, Tiny Toon Adventures, for 800 yen. That's not so bad. And these cards really don't look like they're in like that bad of shape. We got some Kunio Kun stuff here. Uh, looks like some Adventure Island. All that goodness. So yeah, uh, pretty cool. Uh, and then like right next to that, cha-ching. We got the uh, the glass case with some of the more expensive stuff in it. There's some Battle Toads, Bucky O'Hare. There's um, Lickle and Gunnack. I think Chippendale 2, Gun Deck, uh, all kinds of good uh, Famicom stuff in there. And even we got some Mega Drive, some like DS stuff, I don't know why that would be there. It's not retro at all, actually. Uh, and yeah, like uh, Do Re Mi Fantasy, and some Kiki Kai Kai, uh, Undercover Cops, the rare, elusive, expensive stuff, and lots of box stuff, too. So that's cool. So if you have some money to, to burn, they do have some uh, more expensive collector's items here. Uh, also, uh, it is worth mentioning that this shop is cash only, and it's been cash only. I mean, I've, I've come to this shop off and on as we look at some uh, Game & Watch. That's nice. Uh, I've been coming to this shop off and on for like, I don't know, like 10 years, I think. And uh, they would just, they will not will not invest in any kind of card reader. This is a uh, cash only place. As we look at some more uh, loose Super Famicom games, so these are a little bit more expensive than the other ones. We got Cool Spot and Goof Troop, uh, Kunio no Odin, which is a fun uh, Kunio Kun uh, puzzle game where you create little Odin sticks. Uh, we got Crash Dummies, some other things. Um, what is it? Uh, Sandler? Uh, yeah, yeah, Sandla, Sandora no Daiboken. Fun uh, platformer in the uh, the Legend of the Valkyrie uh, series. And we can see here these are alphabetical. So that's the Na, all the Ns, the Taz, the Supa. Everything that starts with Super is in that little section there. So that's nice. Uh, Virtual Bart for 4,000 yen. That's another one. Uh, I don't think I was even aware that that... Had a Japanese release. Learn something new every day. 
And uh, yeah, we got, uh, what was it, Mickey's Magical Adventure 3 or Magical Quest 3. Uh, and then a lot of more of the, um, you know, more desirable Super Famicom games, I guess. They have a shooting section there with you got Darius, Gradius, Parodius, all, the, all, the, all that kind of stuff. They're marked by uh, genre. We have the action section here with our Akumajo games. Yeah, shooting section there, action section here. But we got some some Akumajo, some Doraemon. We got some other stuff down here that says uh, simulation of some sort. I don't know what all that's about. Um, but yeah, we got uh, lots of stuff here. A lot of the uh, kind of essentials. There's Double Dragon, Rockman, you know, your Rockman X, all that good stuff. And um, Gundam Wing Endless Duel, great fighting game for the Super Famicom. And you know, our first party Nintendo stuff, you gotta have that. Your Metroids, your Marios. So here we have, it's loose Mario World, good shape. And uh, it's 800 yen, which uh, you know, you can take or leave because you know, it's like super, super common. <laughs> Everyone who had the system had the game. So there are literally millions of copies lying around. Uh, but yeah, so we got some stuff here. The shelves are looking a little bare right now, uh, but not so bad on the prices sometimes. These, these are some repros by uh, Columbus Circle. This one, Shabibinman Zero, is uh, pretty cool. I do like that game. Uh, but there's some uh, repros there. Some uh, nicer boxed games here. Outer World, Act Razor, Akumajo Dracula. So, uh, not, not so bad. East 5 on the Super Famicom. I do like me some, uh, East 5. Sort of a black sheep of that series. And, uh, yeah, um, Umihara Kawase. Yeah, name escaped me for a second. Yeah, the Super Famicom version, which I've actually never played. Oh, and they're graded here, by the way. So you can look at the condition of the box, the cartridge, and the manual, all on the front of the box, which is very convenient. But yeah, I never played the Super Famicom version of Umihara Kawase, only on the PlayStation and also uh, the more recent game on the Switch. As we got some Rockman X games, we got some Ranma, we got Yu Yu Hakusho games, uh, which are cool. The two fighting games, uh, Yu Yu Hakusho 2 and Yu Yu Hakusho Final. Uh, I do like both of those. Some Yu Yu Hakusho games developed by Namco. Here we have a, a whole assortment of AC adapters. Which is convenient. So you got some PC Engine adapters, Sega, Famicom, and Super Famicom. Uh, so that's that's very cool. They even had the uh, Twin Famicom adapter. And we got some uh, soundtracks here. It looks like we're gonna see a lot more of these when we go up to the second floor. But we got like the uh, F Zero GX, F Zero AX, which is the arcade version. The both of the soundtracks there. Uh, Lament of Innocence soundtrack, which I do like. Lament of Innocence quite a lot. We got Gradius Arcade soundtrack. So there's some cool stuff right here. Uh, and like I said, there's a lot more uh, soundtracks on the way. I think this was probably about the part where uh, the lady was getting a little uh, annoyed with me. I don't think she she uh, assumed I was going to want to film so much. Uh, but yeah, we got some Game Boy stuff here. Lots of loose Game Boy stuff, uh, which I, I personally, I've never been like a huge handheld gamer. Um, but you know, uh, they are pretty sweet. Maybe I should uh, look into it. But we got manuals here, just lots and lots of loose manuals, which is nice. This could be like a cheaper way to maybe get your games assembled, because I have found like boxes for sale as well, and like Super Potato and other places. So maybe you can buy, if you buy the cart, box, and manual separately, uh, maybe you can save yourself a little, a little bit of cash. Cash you. Um, but we got some boxed Famicom games here, including the, uh, Niketsu Kakuto Densetsu. 2 on 2 Kunio-kun fighting game, which I like a lot. As well as, uh, you know, Kunio-kun soccer. Uh, Ninja Ryukinden, aka Ninja Gaiden, in great shape. Complete for, uh, like 5,000 yen, so that's like 40-something bucks, maybe like 45 bucks for that. For a complete copy of that game. This isn't so bad, I guess. We got some cool stuff over here, some consoles. We got our Twin Famicom, which that's the best model right there with the blue and green because it comes with the um, turbo controller, which is very nice. We got an orange spice GameCube fight stick. 
Uh, Mega Drive minis over here, things like that. The 3D Saturn controller, very cool. And uh, we got some stuff there, like 3DO games. They have a few. Also, you'll notice some of these have the little red stickers on them that say new. It's because they are factory sealed. Uh, so how, however this place got their hands on so many factory sealed games, I don't know. But you can pick up a still factory sealed copy of Valus 3 for the Mega Drive. That's 5,000 yen. So again, like 45 bucks for that. Uh, so, I, you know, seems like a pretty good deal to me. Slime World. Brand new factory sealed. Uh, I just noticed that. I, I don't think I noticed that as I was digging through. Slime World, though, that's a more uncommon game for the for the Mega Drive, isn't it? But we got some cool stuff here, these gold cartridges, I guess, for the Master System and Mark III, but there's OutRun and uh, other things like that, so that's very cool, too. And it's nice that they have all of, you know, so many uh, boxed ones as well. Aleste, the original Aleste uh, shooting game, I guess by Compile, right? They would have developed that. Uh, so that's very cool, and we even got some MSX stuff here, including uh, Gradius 2 on the MSX. That is uh, very cool. Uh, I think someday, uh, if I uh, fill up to, or if I have more space, I, I need more space, like accommodate another game collection. But yeah, I would love to start collecting MSX games. Such an interesting retro you know, console, retro PC, whatever. We have PC Engine here, lots of uh, PC Engine stuff, including East 4, The Dawn of East. That is a great game. Uh, the only PC Engine East game that was not released on the uh, P uh, Turbo Graphics. We have R-Type Complete CD. That's also very nice. So we got some good stuff here. Cosmic Fantasy 3. These are factory sealed and they're 800 yen. Any Anything PC Engine factory sealed for 800 yen, that's, that's a good deal. That's a good deal. And we got uh, more, you know, we got DS stuff. We got a whole lineup here of Famicom disc games. Uh, another uh, interesting little system. Uh, I have uh, a number of uh, disc games in my collection. They're pretty cool. Gyrus by Konami. That's actually one I do not have yet, but that's 7,000 yen. It's a little little on the pricey side. Um, but I do have some some good stuff on my my Famicom disc including the original releases of the Zelda games and we got some Neo Geo uh, Stuff here joy joy kid is fun double dragon is good almost everything for the Neo Geo CD is gonna be good stuff Nam 1975 one of my favorite uh, Neo Geo action games last resort amazing side-scrolling shooter uh, extremely difficult though uh, So yeah, we got uh, plenty of cool stuff on the first floor here at friends, uh, plenty to dig through. Like I said, I did pick up a handful of PC Engine games here. As we're up on the second floor, uh, only cash, no credit. So you got a lot of stuff behind little um, glass things like that. But here on the second floor, this is where they keep uh, a lot of the jewel case stuff. So as we can look here at some Saturn games like Rockman X3 and a layer section, which is one of my favorite Saturn shooters. So on this floor, we'll find, you know, all of the Saturn, the uh, Dreamcast games are on this floor, uh, PS1, PS2, and then lots and lots of soundtracks, which we're going to see in a bit. But we've got some really good stuff here. Sengoku Blade and Sonic Wings Special and, uh, yeah, just lots of, uh, lots of good Saturn stuff just right here. And this is some of their lower price Saturn stuff. Guardian Heroes for 3,000 yen, that's nice. Can't, uh... Can't go wrong with some Guardian Heroes. Uh, and as you can see here, even on the Saturn, we still have plenty of factory sealed Saturn stuff here. X-Men vs. Street Fighter. All nice and complete and in good shape. Gunbird, 4800. It's a little on the high end for Gunbird, actually. Um, but I do I do love me some Gunbird. Anything uh, Psycho is always going to be a good time. We got a nice little PS1 section here. Uh, again, you can see some of the factory sealed games like the Final Fantasy Collection. We got Final Fantasy 7, Final Fantasy 8, uh, which uh, Final Fantasy 7 International, which is nice. It's just basically an updated version of the original uh, Japanese version of Final Fantasy to include some of the things they changed for the Western release. So that is a, a nice little 
uh, thing to have in a, a collection if you're a Final Fantasy fan. Uh, G. Darius for the PlayStation. Uh, that is a great Darius game. You can snatch up uh, enemies and use them as uh, little uh, helper options for your ship. So that's really cool. As we carry on, uh, some, I believe these are retro game magazines and other kinds of things, books and whatnot, like this uh, sort of Street Fighter 15th anniversary art collection, I think DVD pack as well, because it looks like it has Street Fighter 2 V, so comic versus animation. That's, that's cool. Which Street Fighter 2 V was a, you know, pretty cool little series. I did enjoy that. Used to have it on DVD back in the day, actually. So we got like art book things. Um, this is cool. A Batsu Gun manga, I guess. Truth story Batsu Gun. Um, so that's cool. I don't know how exactly you make a manga out of Batsu Gun. There's not really a story to it per se. Um, but that's cool. <laughs> I'm not going to argue with a Batsu Gun manga. Uh, and uh, here, yeah, we got uh, lots of retro gaming magazines. Um, so, cool. Old <laughs> old 8-bit stuff. Um, that's pretty cool. Thundercross. Uh, Gamist. Gamist magazine. So, uh, yeah, I'm guessing there's like lots and lots of uh, retro gaming magazines that were disseminated all throughout Japan. Here we have something especially cool. Uh, in their soundtrack section... So we're looking at Rocket Knight Adventures on vinyl. Um, this is something I had never noticed them having before, but uh, they now have lots of soundtracks on vinyl as I get myself into a better position to look at all these awesome covers. Uh, so this Capcom Rondo of Blood vinyl soundtrack by a company called Mondo. So that's cool. I think I've seen some of these on some other people's uh, channels, some channels I watched where they uh, they like to collect soundtracks and vinyl. I've seen some of these, but not all of them. Uh, this one I have seen before. Uh, the Castlevania 3 vinyl soundtrack. Look at that cover art. That is just awesome. That's all kinds of awesome. Contra, we got some uh, Resident Evil, that's cool. More Castlevania. This uh, I dig a lot. Gradius. I've always loved all of the all of the music from Gradius, and just look at that. That's just some be really beautiful artwork there. So that's very cool. Um, and then this as well. Uh, Zentata, the Taito sound team. So it's got Night Striker, Metal Black, Elevator Action Returns. Uh, all on uh, some vinyl here. So that's very cool. So I like that a lot. So yeah, I don't collect vinyl, but if I did, I'd be uh, a happy camper. Uh, Sega game. So what we're looking at here right above the vinyl soundtracks. These are little strategy guides So uh, we got some Sonic and other various releases uh, a Street Fighter 02 guide, I guess all about I Don't know pulling off some sick combos in Street Fighter 02 uh, But anyway, that's that's uh, about all I could uh, Muster in there. So yeah, I did not get a massage by the way while I was here um, but yeah, I didn't want to irritate anyone because they do tend to be irritable in there if they think you're taking advantage of the filming there. Uh, anyway, uh, thanks for watching everyone. Friends in Akihabara, if you're ever in town, you got cash on you, remember that. Uh, drop by, say hello, buy some games. Anyway, thanks for watching everybody and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, goodbye. Everybody, Jim here, uh, coming to you from my apartment right now, a little hungover, uh, having some coffee, and going back over this footage uh, I recorded whilst in Akihabara uh, this fine evening before going to the Tokyo Video Gamers Bar to uh, imbibe lots of beer and play lots of video games 
Uh, I went to Mandarake, this big building here we see before us. And uh, in particular, went to the sixth floor of Mandarake to go uh, peruse some video games. So that's what we're going to do right now as I drink my coffee and uh, take a look at this. We're going to go look for video games, yay! Uh, so in here, as you can see, uh, pretty much everything in these big plastic cases. As we take a look at the Japanese version of Earthworm Jim, one of my favorite 16-bit games, and it's a pricey one. Um, so that's what makes this place a little, um, when you're looking for games here, uh, you gotta kind of pull everything off the shelf a little bit to really examine it, because it's in these big cases, and that makes it a little bit cumbersome. As we look at X-Men Mutant Apocalypse, another one of my favorite 16-bit games, and another one that's kind of pricey. Um, but what's nice is they also have the price listed on the side of the games. So you don't have to really like just to see the price. You don't have to take everything off the shelf and examine it. You can see the price on the side. Um, but if you really want to take a closer look, uh, you're going to want to take it out and uh, have a looky-see. So we check out Garouden Setsu on the Super Famicom. Yeah, so this whole section right here, box stuff for the Super Famicom, as if you couldn't tell already. Um, GS Mikami, that's a great Japan exclusive for the Super Famicom. Another one that's uh, pretty expensive these days. Didn't always uh, be that way. But what can you do? And Gogo -Go Akuman 3. I like the Gogo -Go Akuman games. They're good um, side-scrolling platformers for the Super Famicom pretty great games um, so yeah at least you know everything in here is going to be in uh, pretty pretty good shape I'd say you can see the little label it'll tell you the condition of the box cartridge and manual from A to C and uh, with everything being in these protective cases you at least know that like they're not gonna suffer any damage here in the store I guess um, as we look at Street Fighter 2, the original, and some uh, Triforce of the Gods, aka Link to the Past, and Pretty Fighter, everybody's favorite 16-bit fighting game. Uh, so yeah, everything in this store, super protected, uh, nothing's gonna happen to it, it's in these uh, cases that, you know, you take it to the front, they have like their little locking mechanism. Kind of reminds me, um, what was it back in the I used to work at a Sam Goody. And uh, a lot of the stuff we had in there had uh, little cases like that on, especially the CDs. All of the CDs were in these little protective cases that we had to take off with a little magnetic thing. Uh, so they got those in here. So they'll take these cases off and give you your game. As we look at Soul Blader, aka Soul Blazer. Which is a great game. It's about 30 bucks complete. Um, which I guess, all things considered, isn't that much for a complete game. So that's nice. Smash TV for the Super Famicom. Another uh, Midway classic. Got some first party stuff. Our Mario uh, collection, Sunshine, Metroid, and stuff. At a certain point, I just get uh, tired of pulling games off the shelf, I guess, and just start showing you the sides of the games. You can see the titles, you can see the prices. Uh, and I'm having me some coffee right now. So, uh, take a look at some of these uh, cool games, like Pop and Twin Bee, while I sip my coffee. Alright, so as we step away from those Super Famicom games and 
come to, uh, I guess just the Neo Geo case in here. They actually have uh, a couple of different big glass case areas in here with all the super rarefied air, the big money stuff. Um, so there's some consoles in here, which is all good, all boxed up, but uh, as you can see, it's almost all Neo Geo stuff in here. Shock Troopers, Metal Slug, I mean, these games are thousands of dollars. It's, um, yeah, needless to say, I do not, do not own an AES, and I do not collect for one. Because uh, it's just insanity, some of the prices. As we come around to uh, something I'm more familiar with, Famicom. I do love me some Famicom, including Star Wars, with the Darth Vader Scorpion thing. That's always fun. And uh, what do we got here? Oh, Nemo. I've actually uh, still not played Little Nemo. Uh, it says, uh, Japanese title says Nemo uh, Pajama Hero, which is uh, really cute. Uh, and the uh, Puyo Puyo on Famicom. I've never played the Famicom port of Puyo Puyo either. Which is weird because I'm a big Puyo Puyo fan. Wario no Mori, aka Wario's Woods, which I think was the last game released for the NES, right? It's not the last Famicom release, but the last NES release. Uh, Rockman 6 for 15,000 yen. That is quite rich. Uh, is that, like, supposed to be factory sealed or something? That one's 7,500. So maybe the 15,000. Uh, well, that was Rockman 4, though. Um, but that's insanity. That's way too much for that. That's something else I should have mentioned about Mandarake. Their prices are not always very good. As we have Golgo 13 here. The, the first Golgo game. Which is uh, pretty cool. And then the, uh, the follow-up to that game. Uh, which I, I uh, the title escapes me right now, but that one's pretty cool too. Those games are they're weird. They're like multi-genre spanning games. There's side scrolling and action and a little shooting and everything. Gun Deck though, A.K.A. Vice Project Doom. I love this game. Very good. A, a better example of uh, cross-genre stuff where it's a side scrolling action game. There's shooter seg shooting segments, top down shoot 'em up and crosshair type things. Um, so I love that game. And of course, Gradius. Can't go wrong with Gradius. That's, uh, 2,900 yen for a boxed copy of Gradius. And, uh, 75, though, for Gradius 2, which is less common. Gradius 2, I have way more trouble with, uh, difficulty-wise than the first game, and the third game, too. For whatever reason, I just find Gradius 2 to be quite difficult. As we look at some, uh, loose cards here. Biometal, Final Fight... Uh, some other stuff. These are more expensive uh, loose cart uh, games. Uh, so uh, check those out while well, Jim continues to nurse his hangover with a little bit of coffee. Ooh, Little Samson. Lovely. Alright, getting in it with some PC Engine, yes, yes, jumping in the deep end. Uh, Mystic Formula, which is way more expensive now than what it was. I, I swear I bought Mystic Formula like a year or two ago, and it was like 10 bucks. Now it's a $100 game. I don't know what the hell happened. Uh, East 4, great game, 1900 yen. It's in really great shape. A lot of these all have their spine cards and stuff like that, which is nice. Um, but I do like East 4 a lot. Uh, Ane Chan. Pardon me. Uh, I wouldn't call these girls Chan. They'll punch you in the face. Ane San, that's a fun little brawler. 
Uh, advanced variable geo. Maids. Fist fighting in the street. Great game. R type. Complete CD. Wonderful. I'm an R type fan. I like them a lot. Even though they're uh, damn difficult, though. I find the R type games to be uh, more difficult than the Gradius games for sure. Uh, but I do still like them quite a lot. And we've even got some Famicom disc up here. And uh, moving right along, those orange uh, labels, you can't miss them. The Dreamcast, it's, you uh, never pass up a Dreamcast section. As we're looking at Shinmu 2, which is nice. That big collector's thing. And Super Puzzle Fighter 2X for matching service. Fantastic game. I love uh, Puzzle Fighter and Star Gladiator 2, a.k.a. Plasma Sword. So all this really good Capcom stuff right here. Uh, which, you know, if you're familiar even a little bit with my channel, you know what a, a big fan of 80s and 90s Capcom I am. Can never go wrong with that. Speaking of, Giga Wing. Great game. And Giga Wing 2. I actually uh, prefer the first Giga Wing over the second one. By quite a lot, actually. I like that game a lot. And uh, Gunbird 2, which I also love. Actually, just recently posted a review for Gunbird 2. Great on the Dreamcast with exclusive characters. And uh, Mark of the Wolves, which there's Dreamcast, and then there's, you know, the Neo Geo version, which is too rich for my blood, but it's also on the PS2 and others. Uh, Capcom vs. SNK2, amazing game. Classic stuff. Um, and then all these King of Fighters games. Uh, I think a handful of which were not released outside of Japan, right? Like King of Fighters 2000, 2001, 2002. Those were uh, not released in North America on the Dreamcast, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so yeah, that's great. You know, Dreamcast, a lot of love from Capcom and SNK, including Mars Matrix. Again, a wonderful game. I come across this game quite a lot, actually, in uh, shops like this. that carry lots of good stuff, and it's always expensive. So I'm happy I already have my copy. Marvel vs. Capcom 2 on the Dreamcast, which is kind of lame right now, since uh, um, you have to earn uh, online points in that game to unlock all the characters, and good luck playing some online Dreamcast matches for Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Uh, Zero Gunner 2... Maybe my favorite shooter on the Dreamcast, actually. Uh, I really love this game. It's just, uh, it's, you know, fairly simple, multi-directional, top-down shooter. And just, uh, you know, jump in. Get at it. No, uh, no magical powers or anything too fancy. Just play the game. And Earthworm Jim 2 on the Sega Saturn, uh, which is a game I love. It's actually one of my favorite kind of games in general. Um, I love Earthworm Jim 2 on the Saturn. Um, that's my excuse, my favorite Earthworm Jim game, my favorite iteration of an Earthworm Jim game, um, of all the different ports of the first and second game. And we have some Neo Geo CD here, which is pretty cool. Um, I was pretty close, I think, to having a complete Neo Geo CD collection, um, which I then sort of uh, gave up on, and have actually since sold some of my Neo Geo CD games, but it's nice to know that if I really want to buy them back, I can just, you know, run down to the store and, you know, buy them up. So that's always cool. And uh, Gusun Oyoyo S. Uh, the Gusun Oyoyo games, if you're a puzzle fan, uh, do not sleep on those, because they are exceptionally fun. The Gradius Deluxe Pack, which I think has the original Gradius and Gradius 2. That's pretty cool. And then later on the PS2, there was Gradius 3 and 4 released as a bundle, which I also have, so that's great. Get the arcade versions of Gradius 3 and 4. Uh, Waku Waku 7. Fantastic fight em up. Fight em, a fight em up? It's a fight em up. I've invented a new term. A fantastic fight em up for the Saturn. Uh, developed by um, Sunsoft. Metal Black, a game I still haven't played yet, but I've been very interested in because I love Saturn shooters, and uh, it looks pretty interesting. It's like a spore-collecting 
thing to up, uh, fill up your super meter. Metal Slug for the Saturn. The Saturn version is a good version of that game. You can use it with a 1 meg RAM cart. And uh, it makes for a very, very good uh, version of that. Batsugun. One of my favorite Saturn shooters. Again, a lot of these uh, like Saturn and Dreamcast shooters, I'm really happy that I, I bought them like years ago. Because uh, now, I mean, they weren't cheap then, but now, whoa, daddy, stand back, man. Um, but yeah, so those are some fantastic titles. Um, okay, Jim needs his coffee again. So enjoy looking at these Neo Geo and Sega games and stuff without my anarchic ramblings. Hello, Rambo. All right, Mega Drive games. Love that. Always love Mega Drive um, box art. Light Crusader. Cool. Um, you know, I always love some good Mega Drive box art. They always did have great stuff on there. Ride and Trad, which is a game I like. A game I've been trying to like one CC and haven't been able to. And the Yu Yu Hakusho. I forget the entire title. The game by uh, Treasure. So there's a Yu Yu Hakusho fighting game by Treasure. One of two Yu Yu Hakusho games on the Mega Drive, in fact. Tatsujin, aka Truxton, another great uh, game that I, uh, yeah, a bunch of Mega Drive games like Truxton, Raiden Trad, Fire Shark. I've tried to, um, I'm trying to 1cc those, and I always get like so close. Or not 1cc, but uh, no death. I'm trying to beat those without dying. Uh, Arrow Flash, which uh, is a Mega Drive shooter I like a lot, actually. I think that's one of the um, kind of underappreciated shooters for the Mega Drive. But it's simple, you know, fun, not too difficult. Maybe that's why people don't take it so seriously. It's not really that hard of a game. Uh, and then some Game Boy stuff. Game Boy Color, various handheld things. Uh, which I'm not really a handheld gamer, but... That's all good. I, now that I think there are some, maybe like a handful of like Game Boy games I would like to get my hands on. But you're looking at, look at all these Game Boy games. Good lord. This is just an entire aisle almost. They're just like nothing but Game Boy. Oh, well, there's some stuff I would like to get my hands on. Um, Nubo is actually just recently reviewed by uh, Jimmy Hoppa. It looked pretty cool, and but now it's pretty expensive. Is that just like a Mandarake thing? The hell's going on? Uh, some Kunio Kun, so stuff like that. Kunio Kun and uh, these, you know, the Nemesis games, aka just uh, Game Boy Gradius. I'd like to have stuff like that, or like Mario Land, uh, some of the Kirby, you know, Kirby, Kirby Pinball, things like that. It's kind of a limited window of Game Boy games that I would, you know, really like to have. Uh, as we move away from that, we're coming over to uh, the other case in the, uh, the shop, which is filled with all the other like super expensive stuff. So it's like Super Famicom, Famicom, it's PC Engine, Saturn. I mean, you're looking at all of it, you know, the uh, Kiki Kai Kai games, and Biometal, Phalanx, Hagane. Um, yeah, 
wild guns, undercover cops. So this is all that rarefied Super Famicom and Famicom Air in here. Um, so some of these games I have, some of them I do not. Some of them I'll probably never have just because, I mean, Lord have mercy. They're hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Saturn shooters. That's the rich stuff. Again, I have a bunch of the Saturn shooters. And I'm glad I have them. And the ones I don't have... On Trirus Derby, another one. Jeez. Um, the Saturn shooters I don't have. Uh, it's very likely I'll never have them. Just because... I mean, unless I just fall into a whole lot of money... Uh, it's not too likely, as we look at all these Mega Drive games as well, like the Battle Mania games, Pulse Man, Turtles, stuff like that. Just the super rare stuff. And even some more consoles. That's nice. Box stuff. Um, but yeah, just uh, so much great stuff in there, but just so, so expensive. So, But you can see this place really is catering to the collectors. They keep stuff in as great a shape as possible, and... Uh, the prices to match but anyway that's it we're uh, we're out of here so long mandarake uh, so if you're in Akiba and you are indeed a game collector uh, mandarake is a place to drop by if you don't mind spending a little more I guess on uh, stuff you know is gonna be in pretty pristine condition but anyway uh, that's it for this video ladies and gentlemen and others so thanks for watching and uh, come back next time for more game hunting and or hangover nursing with coffee. Uh, so thanks again. And uh, until next time, everybody, take care. Goodbye.